Hello mate and welcome to a, another Daz Studio uh, deeper development type thingy video thing. So what I'm doing currently is uh, more renders of uh, Sarah character. She's um, she's out of hospital and unlike the last uh, video like this I did where she's chilling out in the living room now we're getting her to do some exercising. Um, so I've taken her glasses off for this one. And she's just basically going to be doing some, nothing like too strenuous, just kind of like yoga and stretching and, um, you know, body weight. This the kind of thing that you'd see people doing in front of the TV because um, she's been instructed to do that, to exercise. Um, moderate exercise, you know, light exercise just to keep her um, reasonably fit and healthy. So that's what she's doing out by the pool. And then the main character, Jake, can come out and... Um, keep an eye on her to make sure that she doesn't fall in the pool because bear in mind that she's still partially sighted and has um, you know fits or, or bouts of um, lightheadedness and stuff so one of the um, one of the the kind of plot points of the storyline is that um, in order to unlock one of the story arcs you kind of have to repeat this event until she uh, has an accident and then that kind of triggers a series of events but this is just uh, this is nothing to do with that this is just uh, Sarah doing some exercising by the pool so um, I'm just currently whilst I'm talking to you I'm just browsing through my um, exercise poses just to see if there are any that uh, spring to mind or that, that, that sort of jump out at me um, again she's not going to be doing anything crazy no like wicked balancing on one leg or anything like that purely because as I say she is um, partially sighted and has um, balance issues so we're just looking for some kind of light yoga stuff that she can do now I'm bearing in mind that I'm, I like my renders to look as realistic as possible which kind of rules out a lot of yoga poses because unfortunately the joint bends in Das Studio characters are pretty bad particularly the hip joint if you bend the legs um forwards you can see just the the weighting is is not very good and it looks really unnatural around the, uh, the top of the leg where it kind of just bows inwards which is really not very good um so i'm not going to do any any poses that have like really extreme bends in any of the joints which does limit my options a little bit but not not so much that I can't get some convincing poses out of her. It's just got to be a little bit careful about which ones, uh, which ones I go for, and also, but you know, bearing in mind that there are a um, there's a number of people that are going to be playing this game that are going to be looking for a specific type of content. Which, uh, whilst I'm not one to pander to those types of people, I do appreciate that. Um, I have to make these as aesthetically pleasing as possible. So I'm just looking for some good ones. I'm thinking it's, it's tricky. I'll be honest, it is tricky to, to pick. I don't want to be one of those guys who just goes and picks everything, you know, because that's... I could spend all day just banging out render after render after render. I've got a... Uh, RTX 4090 so I can knock out a decent render in probably you know like a, a production quality render in about 20 minutes um, but I'm not interested in just pumping the game full of hundreds and hundreds of mediocre renders I'd rather put five really good ones than 50 mediocre ones you know so just yeah being very selective about which ones I go with and there, there are quite a few pose packs that you can buy pre-made poses for um, exercising but between me, you, me and the gate post the majority of them are nigh on identical there's very little difference between the majority of these poses so uh, ok this one, let's have a look at this one ok so let's see, let's look at that from the side Aside from the feet being at different levels, which is odd. 
It's like either who may, whoever made the pose did it deliberately like this or they're friggin' useless. It could be either if we're being completely honest with ourselves. Um, so let's just have a look and see what else we've got available to us. I'll just do a simple one of her stretching off to start off, which is warming herself up in a kind of a, uh, what do they call it, tree pose or something like that, I think, in yoga, if I remember rightly. And yeah, that'll work. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my camera angle around to about here. That's a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Cool. And then I'm going to change my render settings to the vertical plane so that I can get a shot. This basically this is going to be a shot that scrolls from bottom to top over the course of like five seconds or something and then I can just come to yeah right. come back around to this angle plop a camera where my viewport is the camera five I can now turn on depth of field and make sure that she's in focus which she is and then I can pull the focus in so that it's mainly focused on her Base. and that just means I'm going to get a really nice shallow depth of field lighting is okay because this is obviously an outdoor environment so it's natural lighting uh, which cameras I can get rid of most of these cameras to be honest I don't use them for anything cool so again it's just a case now of fine-tuning to make sure because there are lots of little things like contact points on the floor and you know bits that you could easily miss if you aren't paying attention like for example wearing shoes like this wearing sneakers like this it's really difficult to get the floor contact point right because when you're standing still in a pair of sneakers your entire body weight is basically on the heel so the heel needs to be on the floor but also the toes don't want to be pointed up in the direction of the sky. So you kind of have to strike a happy medium on this one. So I'm actually going to rotate her feet up slightly and then bring the toes back down. And then again, it's just trying to find that happy medium and then lowering her down to the ground and then I can fix the other foot Nope, way too much. Okay, so we're going to have to do this using slider. So it doesn't matter so much if the bottom of the shoe is a little bit squished, but you don't want it to be like inches and inches of clipping. Now let's just see how much of that other. Yeah, we can see almost all of the other back foot as well. So we need to repeat the process for the back foot. Conscious of the fact that that back foot is actually slightly lowered down, so I might need to open the legs a smidge. Because you can see that's actually rolled inwards. Let's untwist that smidge. And that might actually help. And from the inside, that, how does that look? Does that look okay? Eh, uh, let's come back to the main camera and have a look and see what we've got. Yeah, that's tolerable. Okay, so that's the feet. I'm pretty happy with the feet being more or less where they need to be. Let's have a look at the hands. Make sure that there's no accidental clipping of the hands. That thumb is in a very odd position. You might be thinking, well, that's a minor detail. Why are you bothering to waste energy on that? Well, when this scrolls up along the screen, player is going to see all of these details in quite close proximity so we don't want any silly little mistakes like that okay so that is more or less where I want it to be so I'm going to hit the render button let that roll and then uh, go into edit it in Photoshop so the next thing you're going to see is uh, Photoshop so here we are in Photoshop it's a um, reasonable looking render uh, there are a few things that I need to fix before I do anything else though. First thing is 
whatever this is. Um, so I appreciate that this is not a D-Force outfit, so it's not going to necessarily um, behave like normal cloth, but the fact that it's conforming to the body like this means that any slight change in the body's position you can end up with this really weird looking waistband effect and obviously this obvious um, gap in the geometry there. So we need to do something about that before we do anything else. So I'm going to copy the background layer. We're going to go into the liquify tool and I'm going to zoom in so that I can actually see what I'm working on. And then I'm going to come up to this area. I'm going to just try and straighten out some of these obvious um, horrible kind of warped areas in the fabric just to make it look like it's a little bit smoother because that, that's kind of a, that's the kind of thing that's going to make the person look at the, Im at the image it's going to make the difference between this being considered to be a good render and a bad render those little fine details make quite a lot of difference and obviously this gap I mean this bit of cloth isn't even touching the torso it's it's, it's actually sort of hovering between the the two sides of the rectus abdominis so there's absolutely no reason that that should be conforming to what whatever the body's doing so we're going to have to really gently just drag out those details and get this looking a lot, a lot smoother and just trying to make it look reasonably smooth ironing out those little bumps That looks quite a bit better and then this area I don't know what the hell is going on so we'll do what I can to remedy it. I can use the pinch tool if I want to but that is or the pucker tool sorry but that is um it's very hit and miss if you screw it up because you can end up with a really bizarre looking transition that you didn't mean to have so you might actually be better off using something like the uh, clone stamp tool for that kind of thing but that's passable it's, it's, it's okay and I think I need to just do a little bit more work on this area and just lift it up a smidge just make it look like it's actually kind of bending with the torso okay so that's that um this area again I need to do something with this whole business here because that's just not how cloth behaves um, when it's wet, whether this is tight or if it's loose, that's just not what uh, cloth does. So let's just try and tidy up this area so that it actually has smooth transitions. None of these really weird looking sharp bends in the fabric. And we can only do so much around this area because obviously we don't want to make it look like she's got massive armpits. So, or a massive neck for that matter. So we do have to be a little bit restrained in what do here but we can at least make this whole area look a little bit more realistic unfortunately this is the nature of the beast when you work with das studio it's one of the reasons why i can't wait to stop using it when i get onto my next game because it is there are so many little niggly things that on the face of it you think well why does that bother you that's nothing but when you have to do thousands and thousands of renders those little things can make all the difference okay so let's check the hands look okay they do they've got a, a lot of um depth of field on them so yeah she's kind of because she's partially sighted she's kind of staring blankly off into space as she's working out okay so i'm happy with the results of that we can see the before and after and there we go it looks a much more natural so next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to fix that poke through on the breasts because we don't really want that uh let's get rid of that and i'm not going to get all um weird about you know using the correct tool for the right job here i'm just going to use the tool that works so for the right nipple it was the healing brush tool but for the left nipple it is the clone stamp brush tool and then there's this business here i'm going to get rid of that by just clone stamping over it so it doesn't matter too much if it's a little bit of a, a blemish but okay let's see right so now we can 
flatten that. So I've got to lay a flatten image. Then I'll use my actions to make it look more realistic. Selected area is empty. What? Oh, God. Right, okay, so we're going to have to go back, 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 back. Okay. Let's have a look. Right, so that's the first effect. I don't know why it's throwing a wobbly with the uh, the second one, but that's fine. Okay, uh, so let's just see what happens there. Yeah, same because it selected area is empty, so it's tried to select. Oh, I see what's happened. Right, the action is not going to work for this tall image. That's the problem. Okay, it's not the end of the world. Okay, layer flat an image, so I, c I can just make the necessary adjustments here anyway, because I know what the actions are. So I'm just going to go with a, a curves layer. And... Give it that sort of matte effect and then bring the contrast up a tiny bit. Perhaps go too mad that's quite a lot so I'm going to start with keeping my highlights where they are and just drop the shadows down a smidge that's cool and then I'm going to go with a yep we're going to go with a fill layer it's because it's selected on the mask so right I need to add another layer now Gonna fill it with that color and then set this to really low opacity and put it on to soft light. Cool beans, right? So that's that. And then I can take some of the yellow out of the image there with a uh, curves layer again. Now I'll use hue and saturation, I'll just keep life simple. I'm going to get rid of some of the reds and some of the yellows and some of the greens just to undo some of the color change that was done by the contrast that I added in the previous layer. Now I can flatten my image. Cool beans. And then I'm going to use the clone stamp tool to get rid of that strip down the side that is barely noticeable to you guys, but I can see it from where I am. Okay, I was originally using uh, the um, healing brush tool to fix that, but it's not as useful as the clone stamp tool. Okay, so now I've done that, now I can add a couple of light effects because the sky is quite bright. So we'll grab a white brush and a soft round. Drop the opacity down to about 20%, drop the flow down to about 50%, and just add some highlights where the sky is. And then maybe just a couple of smaller beams of light hitting the back of her. That looks good. I'm actually going to do a little baby bloom. So we go filter, I'll go to image actually, image adjustments threshold no that's not that's the wrong button entirely let's try that again threshold take our highlights i think i might come there will work and then filter blur oh that will actually do and then i'm going to add this as a soft light oh, uh, maybe screen yeah, screen will work, and then all I'm going to do is just drop the opacity down, and then uh, on my layer mask, which I'm about to add, just going to remove some of it from, oh, goddamn, just from around here, because I, I, I want it to be more emphasized on her body than I do on the sort of outlines of the rest of the environment, so just doesn't have to be completely gone but I just want it to be kind of more focused on her 
that'll work. And then I think I need to add a bit of warmth to this image because it does feel a bit cold. So I'm going to grab another layer like that. I'm going to go with a kind of an orange, maybe a peachy kind of color. That'll work. And then go with a soft light and drop the opacity way down, just adding a tiny bit of warmth in there. That's good. Happy days are come. Pretty happy with that. So I'm going to save that and then that's that image done. Um, thanks very much for watching that, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below, of course, and I'll speak to you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.